I haven't prepared anything for this video but I just got inspired with sharing some parts of my personal life with you like comparing before and after and even though I don't like to share my personal life but I hope that this is gonna work out and help a lot of young people to change the way they think because this will really sort out all of your issues and your problems. I remembered when I was younger when I used to have this kind of religion as culturally based. I remembered when my family used to convey the message of religion in a very culturally based like I used to pray, I used to do fasting but it was for the sake of my family. I was doing it for the sake of my family so that they don't get upset. And at that time, I didn't feel the religion from heart. I was doing it like in body movements. I had to do it. Like I was forced to do it because they told me that there would be something bad happening to me, but I don't know what it is. It wasn't clear enough. Like they told me that there would be punishment. I don't remember, but I remember the feeling that I didn't feel anything from the heart. I was just feeling guilty all the time. And Feeling guilty helped me somehow, but it wasn't the whole thing. Because I got lost for some time because of planting religion as culturally based. Then when I started to have this kind of passion as a young woman, like starting to make her future, like everything is in front of her. But my family planted the feeling of guilt inside me. Then I went out to look for my future. And I had this passion of like, I need to do everything in life like I need to achieve my dreams I need to do my master degree my PhD I want to work in the best place ever I want to get the best car I just lived the dreams as a young woman and I wanted to achieve them and I had that kind of feeling guilty all the time so I had to pray I didn't skip praying I had to pray because of the feeling of guilt so even if I got late at work outside, I had to get back home to combine two prayers so that I don't sleep like that because I had in the background in my subconscious that my family told me that something bad would happen to me but I don't remember what it is. So the subconscious feeling guilty. So I used to feel guilty. That's why I had to pray. But the heart wasn't feeling it. And because I am self-observant, I really can observe myself very well. I struggled a lot in life at that time. Like I was chasing, running from a place to place, from job to job, struggling in life. I used to have fights on a daily basis, complaints from colleagues, uh, car accidents. Like I used to have troubles on a daily basis. I didn't understand. Like I thought at that time that it's the norm of life. To live like that. This is the life. They told me that life is full of tests. So I used to adjust with that life, but it was so hectic. My life was so messed up. Really, as if you're like running in the street all the day and you get nothing in the end. And it was very bad until a voice came from my brother telling me that it might be your fault. And then, then the voice came into my brain like from the first time I tried to ignore it and push it away. And then he told me again that it's your fault. It might be your fault. What is happening to you? It's your fault. Then I started to think about it and by the way the brain takes so many times to start to be convinced with this it's not being processed from the first time it took a very long time to me to observe and he advised me with some pieces like of advice to do some kind of worship by heart like trying to do night prayer trying to read Quran for the intention of fixing your issues and I started doing this 
I did it at that time consistently for one week and I had to isolate myself from everyone outside and I started to do this on a daily basis, night prayer and I had miracles. I felt them like I had dreams that came to me in messages of warning to try to remove uh, this card from the bank. You had a card that you forgot and I really like forgot the card. Like I, I used to get messages of like cleaning to clean my way and I didn't realize at that time what was that. I remember very well that everything that came to me was to fix my issues around and I didn't understand what the issues were. Like I didn't ask specifically about a certain issue but I just got these dreams to fix my issues. And at that time I felt there is something here. There is something that's big, very big. And since that time I started to be committed, very committed by heart and I started to increase the worship. And when you increase the act of worship you start loving Allah. And loving Allah by heart is different when you do it in a culturally based, it's completely different. So when I started loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, I started to understand what he was doing with me. I started to understand that he was doing everything to help me. I started to understand that he was just trying to pull me to him. He tried to tell me, no, don't go this way. So he messed it up for me so that I tried to turn back to him. He was just trying to pull me because he knows that the hereafter is better than this life. So he was trying to pull me. And at the same time, he's probably promising to make you live peacefully without running, without chasing. So when I started to understand this, I started to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is doing everything for my sake. So this is how love is created between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not coming on the spot. You need to create this bond and relationship with him and ask worship. And then you will understand that everything happened to you was the best for you. So when I started to have this kind of love inside my heart, I started to search and look for anything that makes me closer to him and to study and to do my research about everything that is related to religion because I found that it has treasures our religion has treasures and we don't see them because I found out that when I started to compare my life now and the life before in the past I used to run and chase and juggle from one job to another and I wasn't settled and I wasn't peaceful and I struggled a lot and I got nothing and at that time I was exposed to every evil to the evil of people to someone who fights with me to to someone who complains, to a thief, to anything. I was exposed to the evil of the people, to everything. It was expected because I wasn't protected enough. But when I compare it with my life now, I am very protected, alhamdulillah. And I also, subhanAllah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting me in this kind of peaceful environment and with little effort, very little effort I make, he gives me the money I need and he can make you relaxed and enjoy your life in a peaceful and do your acts of worship without running without chasing if you believe in him and he would send you more than before and he would send you what you need and more than what you need so when I compare it now I find myself very protected and no fights no struggles no juggling no more accidents alhamdulillah protection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is very strong and I ended up with the conclusion that religion for my life for this world life not only for the hereafter if I want to enjoy my life here peaceful I should follow my religion properly they used to scare us from religion that it would make you tight it would limit your freedom it would make you like not be able to enjoy your life no it's not like that you would never be enjoying your life with any material thing this is forget about it because i got everything i followed my passion to the end it's not in the material things it's only in the spiritual thing happiness is in the spirituality your relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you wouldn't be understanding it 
until you reach to that point that you have the luxury the most luxury car and the most luxury house and you cannot breathe the air because you feel suffocated this is where the wealthy people and the people who depend on material things reach it's not as you expect it's not so what i want to tell you that you need to check yourself when your life is messed up because 90 percent it's your fault and most of the verses when I did my search and based on my experience and based on the people's experience it shows that it's our fault 90% and don't rely on saying that it's all tests no we can say that there are tests but for those believers who've reached a very high belief they might be tested with the death of somebody it's fine it's there but for you I'm talking about you who is like suffering and struggling from a messed up life you need to fix yourself and as much as you fix yourself you would end up with a good life so it's like you're cleaning what you have done in your life and by the way when i say it's my fault this is including everything my prayer my commitment my vicar even the gossip even breaking the promises even when i take a pen from my colleague and i don't return back try to make sure that this is gonna be bounced back again and anything you might get bounced back in shortage of money in a fight with a colleague so in, in the end you will be bounced back if you intended to to steal a pen so you need to think this way I know it's harsh but it would be better for you to notice and realize what is happening what you're doing exactly watch yourself watch your words watch the way you're thinking watch the words that are coming out of your mouth watch your commitment all of these are being reflected into a result and the result the good life or the messed up life because of what you have done so it's like action and reaction and i wish i had someone who told me earlier because i made very long choices at that time and I wasn't aware but if I was aware Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have granted me better choices good people because really when you have this kind of life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you live peaceful you have only good people around you meet only good people you don't see evil people that much like before no it's not there you're totally protected